What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today I want to talk about Teleport and I'm really excited for this project because it's only been a matter of time since something like this would come up. I would have been waiting for this. I've actually been searching on Google and then my friend Deeping Connection brought it up in a recent video that we just did together. Teleport is aiming to be a decentralized ride sharing application. So I want to talk to you guys about this, uh, all the pros, there's really not any cons that I can think of after reading their white paper and everything. They really got it locked in. One of the main concerns, obviously, being when you have an application like this going out, I talked to my friends about it and they said, oh, great, we're going to get robbed or you know, we're going to get kidnapped because it's with crypto. And that brought up some valid questions on my end, like how are they going through the legal side of things, verifying drivers, verifying users, making sure everything is legit. And they cover all of that in their white paper. So I think that's really awesome. Currently, right now, they are in the beta phase. And you can only download it on iOS right now with a referral code link. I will have that in the description below so you guys can check it out and download it. I currently have it downloaded. And something like this, it pretty much is going to, in my opinion, blow up like in popularity over the next couple of months to years as it continues to grow and as they dial in their process, as more people drive, as the word of mouth goes up. So the reason Teleport is better than Uber and Lyft is their fees. And it's incredible. I mean, they talk about how Uber takes about 40%, up to 40% fees on their drivers, and Uber isn't doing anything. They're just connecting two people to each other. So something like this, because it's decentralized, because there's not a lot of overhead that they have to take care of, the user and the driver uh, pretty much get 90% rewards, maybe even higher than that. Uh, the driver will get 90% commission, which is huge for people that do this for their lives. When you have an opportunity to earn more money, people are going to jump ship off Uber and Lyft because they're... They just keep raising their rates. I, I don't get it. Why do they keep raising their rates? Because they're getting a little bit greedy and their uh, their overhead keeps going up. And you're not going to have that issue with a decentralized application like this, or at least we hope. So it's a little bit long of an intro, but let's get into talking about it. I'm going to show you guys everything that I thought was interesting. I'm going to briefly go over the white paper. And then if you guys have any questions, you can join their Telegram, you can follow them on Twitter, and you can join my Discord and we can talk about it more there. But let's get into it. So this is the website. There's nothing really when you go to the first page. It just tells you pay less, earn more, get rewarded. So it's going to be a cheaper ride. It's going to be a uh, better ride for the drivers and you can get rewarded uh, with the trip ride share protocol. So Going over to the other tabs, there's a company, the newsroom, and the rideshare protocol. The rideshare protocol is their white paper. The newsroom is all of their news articles and everything that you can see. But the, just the company gives you a little bit of a background on the company and what they are doing. Uh, if I go up to the top, it says we're building decentralized marketplaces. Our team has been working hard. And this guy's pretty interesting, Paul Bohm. I'm hoping saying that right. He's the CEO. He actually is pretty uh, well made. And I'll show you guys his little bio right now. So his bio is, uh, he's the founder and CEO of Decentralized Engineering Cooperation, <laughs> Corporation, the software development company focused on building and designing the next generation of mobility-based applications on top of distributed uh, systems technology. Currently, he's building TRIP, a new protocol that will enable a host of mobility-based applications powered by the Solana blockchain, that's big, uh, that utilizes shared ownership to break the network effects of existing matchmaking and marketplace platforms. Prior to DEC, Paul founded Austria's largest food delivery company, MJAM, designed and built Dropbox's peer-to-peer -peer protocol. What? And served as chief strategy officer of Trade Hill, one of the earliest digital currency exchanges. As an entrepreneur and engineer, he currently advises Orchid Labs, a decentralized open source technology for an internet free from surveillance and censorship and field complete, a free software for home service companies. Bohm is proficient in German, Spanish, in addition to English. So that's also huge. When you have a CEO of a company that can speak multiple languages, you have a better chance of succeeding, in my opinion, because he's kind of the face of the company and he's going to be making all these press statements and stuff like that. He'll be able to do them in multiple languages. That's really big. It's really big. So you guys can see all of this information. You can see who works here and, and all that stuff. But 
I'll just quickly scroll so you guys can see them. You can pause if you want to see anybody. And now, I mean, I'm going to skip past the newsroom because I didn't really see anything jumping out other than the fact that they made it. They were speakers at Solana Breakpoint. And when you are a speaker at Solana Breakpoint, that is massive. The last person I covered that was a speaker at Solana Breakpoint was Hive Mapper, just to put it in perspective for you guys. And that was, I think, a year ago um, when they first reached out to me. They sent me the dash cam, the original dash cam. And look at where they're at now. So I think if you make it to Solana Breakpoint, that is like you made it. Like people believe in this project and what it has potential to be. So that's awesome. So now I want to talk about the uh, white paper. And it's pretty long. Like look at how long this, this scroll wheel is. Uh, you can download a PDF if you want. It does have little tabs so you can... A jump into certain spots if I click marketplace or economics it will bring you to that spot but I did want to show you guys an important thing uh, and I'm just gonna jump to the main points that I think are important uh, this one I think is really important habit and brand recognition so with uber and Lyft like it's not like Starbucks and, and Dunkin Donuts or, or Apple and Android Windows and Mac whatever it may be where you're kind of you're kind of loyal to the brand because the way that most of these ride sharing apps and food delivery apps work is whatever can give you the best deal. That's what people are going to get. That's what people are going to go with. Like there's no reason to be loyal to a brand when you're just using this brand as a service to get you what you want or where you need to go. So that's where trip and uh, teleport has an advantage because they're going to be able to offer a better price and hopefully a better customer experience. And it talks about it here. So habit brand recognition and trust can create strong barriers to entry on their own, but they do not represent good examples of network effects. In the absence of a network effect, a formerly unknown but superior product with better customer experience and or cheaper prices can still become a competitive threat by first serving a subgroup of users to build trust and brand recognition and then expanding from there. A moat in the network effect sense requires an advantage that doesn't derive from the relationship of an individual with the product, but from advantages a service can only garner from having a large number of users. So for users, the immediately tangible effects of network effect present in just two dimensions, unit economics, the ability to provide the service more effectively than smaller competitors with their blockchain. They, they I mean, it's their entire infrastructure is going to already have a network that it can stand on, which is huge. And the customer experience, the quality of the service experienced by users is higher than can be provided by smaller competitors. So that's just interesting. I, I wanted to point that out because they're going to be offering better prices, not only for the, the consumer, the person buying the rides, but also for the drivers. They're going to have better rates. They're going to be earning more. There's pretty much everything you need to know about this company in this white paper. Like, I don't have any questions and that says a lot because I usually do have a lot of questions it talks about governance it talks about the reward issuance and how they're going to do that they the civil protection fee that they have uh, uh, which is pretty much uh, talking about a, an attack an attack is an attempt by an individual to gain influence over the network by creating multiple fake identities or transactions they have something in place to protect against that they talk about their plans for network growth and how that's going to take place, their long-term governance, their protocol upgrades and how those are going to take place. Um, protocol designs, riders and drivers are users who connect to the protocol to offer request rides using rideshare applications. Operators handle the regulatory and operational requirements of providing rideshare service. They're powered by rideshare server software, which is comparable to a web or email server. Uh, they talk about the trip marketplace, balancers, verifiers, compliance auditors. Um, and then another thing I wanted to show you guys is here, which is on-chain authorization. So this is a big question that a lot of people are probably going to be having is, hey, uh, am I going to get kidnapped or robbed or anything? Like, is anything bad going to happen to me? Because we have trust with Uber. We have trust with Lyft based on the laws that are set in place that they have to follow all the uh, people driving have to follow. There's compliance. You have to actually register your vehicle and your identity into their system before you can start driving. So this is what this covers. 
It says verifiers must be in legal and operational compliance with all applicable regulations and laws before they can provide services to the network. They must obtain licenses and insurance and be operationally prepared to comply with regulatory and safety requirements in each geography they wish to serve before they can begin matching riders and drivers within these locations. So to ensure the verifiers and operators are compliant with local regulation operational requirements, the TRIP marketplace votes to deputize dedicated compliance auditing firms. These firms receive authorization by multi-sig keys to sign off on the regulatory and operational readiness of operators and verifiers. So I misspoke. That was just for the verifiers and for the drivers and the users. This is the other part, which is the network authorization. So there's an the on-chain and then network. So in order to comply uh, and maintain high safety standards, they also must undergo a authorization process. So it's the same thing, just a little bit different wording and a little bit different um, operations on how to get verified and whatnot. But that, that I thought that was pretty interesting as well as here, uh, I think that I just covered that. And finally, their payment rails. I thought this was interesting because there is a way to pay with crypto. There is a way to pay with US dollars. And I'm sure if they expand to other countries, there will be ways to pay uh, with their native currency. Although, honestly, if you're going to expand to other countries, you might just be better off keeping it with stable coins. So Payments on the rideshare protocol are made using national currencies such as US dollar. The system as much as is possible supports both traditional payments methods such as credit cards and bank transfers as well as newer payment methods like stable coins backed by national currencies. It gives you a little background on bank transfers and credit cards and how they were originally designed. So to bring the stability and security of national currencies such as US dollar, they are utilizing stable coins. They're digital equivalents of national currencies that can be used on modern open protocols. So they mentioned USDC. So it looks like they're going to be using USDC. In the context of the trip protocol, USDC or other stable coins are used as a modern payment rails for the US dollar. Most payment methods uh, within the trip protocol are used are made in USDC or in other countries using comparable well-regulated local market stablecoins. So it talks about that. And then uh, there's just like conclusion here. So I want to give you guys a few of my opinions and thoughts on this. The first one being people that are getting early involved in a project like this are going to be people like you and I watching this video. So I think it's pretty cool. Like initially when this starts going out and people are driving and, and riding and everything, if you get in a car on with uh, teleport, you're probably going to get in a car with another crypto nerd <laughs> like us. So I thought that's pretty cool. That's just like it, it has nothing to do with their application or anything like that. It's just like a thought that I had. Um, I'm also excited that they are on the Solana blockchain because the Solana blockchain is like <clears throat> insane right now with all of the projects, all of the deep in projects that have been coming on to their network. So bullish on Solana? I'm kidding. It, it's not financial advice, but I'm just looking at the science here and there is a lot of projects that are launching on Solana, moving to Solana, and the big one is they're using USDC on Solana. So that's going to be giving a lot of uh, market value to Solana and USDC. On top of that, the Phantom Wallet is very, very easy to use if that's what they're going to be communicating with, uh, with Teleport. And I think that is going to be uh, very good for the future of just, I mean, Solana as a whole. How many times am I going to say that? But I think that's all I got for this video. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comment section below. Maybe I can get Teleport on the channel. That'd be interesting. And we can talk about them more. But if you guys want to join my Discord, we can talk there in the current time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great one. Peace out.